Um, but I think it was 2019 or 2020 where you started becoming very vocal and then you made the big splash where you were like, I've moved some ridiculous part of your liquid net worth. I think it was, I think you might've said 50% at one point. I thought, thought you heard, thought I heard you say 90% into 100%, crypto, hundred yeah. percent into crypto. And, um, so that caught my attention and the attention of a bunch of other people. And so, you know, I know you've talked about this before, but this is a new audience. So give, give kind of the origin story of how the mind virus of crypto kind of like, what were the steps where you went from like curious to convinced? What, what was that journey like for you where you put in 90% or 100% of your quick, My network? job is to live in the future. So I had got, I, I had lived through the financial crisis and predicted it. I had also lived through the European crisis and predicted it and had been in Europe and had to buy a generator and food and get cash out of the bank and keep it at home, right? That's how close we were in Spain to losing our entire banking system. Hmm. And as a macro guy, I knew the issue was leverage. And leverage had meant that we had a unique problem, which was there's a layer of collateral and all of this debt is against the collateral. And usually you've got like 30 claims on the same piece of collateral. In fact, the average US Treasury has 32 claims on it, or it did then, may have more now. So therefore, who owns what in an unraveling? You know, who's going to get screwed? And the the, so, the, the, the leverage was, uh, you're talking about uh, government or corporate? Or where, where did you see this stockpile of leverage? Entire, I, I look at total leverage, financial system leverage, government leverage, um, household leverage, and private sector leverage. Right, so we're at 480% of GDP now, whatever the stupid number is, right? It's ridiculous. Right. But the problem is, is that's a lot of claims on the collateral. Mm -hmm. So, because not everything is collateral in the system, only some things used as collateral. Anyway, so when Lehman went bust, right, everyone's scrambling to find who owns what. And, you know, that, that happens all the time. So I started trying to start the world's safest bank with a bunch of family offices. Um, I thought, you know, we could set a bank that doesn't use leverage, so then... People can put assets there, their savings there, and realize they're safe because it wasn't safe. People in Cyprus had all of their money taken out by the government. Right. So I'm like, okay, I need to do something about this, and I can do something about it. So I started that journey, and a friend of mine called Emil Woods, who was a subscriber to Global Macro Investor, um, who was running a hedge fund at the time, an ex-Goldman guy, he said, you need to look at Bitcoin. And I'd read a bit about Bitcoin. It's probably 2012, um, and I wrote the first macro piece on Bitcoin, which is, I think, the thing you referred to, yep. which is 2013. I was just like, I saw it and thought, okay, so we've got two things here. One is this asset, Bitcoin, and that's a scarce asset in a digital world, so that's probably interesting. And secondly, we've got blockchain, which is a recorded ownership of everything. Okay, well, that solves the entire financial system, and this could be something useful for the financial system in itself as a new version of gold. So I backed out that... The fair value of Bitcoin with gold at 1300 using the kind of supply, you know, stock to flow ratio done badly. I'm, you know, I'm no, you know, statistician or uh, econometrics expert, but I kind of backed it out. So it's probably worth a million bucks. And then how I like to look at things is, OK, wh what's the price now? Two hundred dollars. Let's assume probably rightly that Raul is a total idiot. So let's assume he's wrong by 90 percent. So it's worth one hundred thousand dollars and it's at two hundred dollars. That is the best single bet I've ever seen in my entire life. So yeah. I bought it and I wrote about it and I held it all the way through till. And when you say you bought it, that's like a, like the first time I bought Bitcoin, I bought like, I don't know, a thousand dollars of Bitcoin, right? So I bought it means what? Like you bought a tiny bit, you bought a medium amount, or you went like, you put a significant stake for yourself into it. A decent, a decent enough amount. Um, and I sold it after a 10 X. So I'd done well from it. Sadly, I'd, got divorced in the process. So I halved that. So there was my tax that I don't pay in the <laughs> Cayman Island. I, I, cho I chose a voluntary 50% tax. Um, so, you know, it wasn't a life-changing bet, but it was a, it was a good bet. Now, had I held it on to, to 20,000 when it peaked, yeah, it would have been life-changing. So, okay. So I've been in it. I got out. I was nervous about all of these forking wars and everything going on. I'm like, I don't understand this. Let's wait and see. And then I had talked about it a lot, analyzed it, been involved in it, but hadn't been investing it again until 2019. Started to stick my toes in again because the, the market had been selling off. I was starting to get comfortable that, yes, that we've got a recession coming. This is going to be a useful tool. And then 2020 comes along um, and I was already positioned for a recession. But, you know, this opportunity was like 
okay, if the central banks are going to print like crazy, then that's the opportunity. So I bought a lot of Bitcoin. At, own, at that point, I was long bonds, gold, dollars, Bitcoin. And then over time, I started charting Bitcoin versus other assets. And I realized its dominance in performance was so extreme that it made no sense to own other assets, even with the fact that Bitcoin can be very volatile and have periods like now where it's down 50%. It's like, it makes no sense to own anything else. Now, I probably will take other bets here and there, um, but I think my core strategic... So I was Bitcoin first, then I started doing the work. I was on Twitter a lot um, and... People, if I were to ask anything about Ethereum, people would pile on to me. That makes me want to know more. So I start digging in. <laughs> Has I the thought, opposite is... reaction. <laughs> and I, I knew what about Ethereum and, you know, but I started properly digging in. And I thought, you know, this is really bloody interesting. The chart looks incredible. The chart versus Bitcoin looks incredible. Um, this makes sense to me. So um, I started switching um, into Ethereum. And when you 